Hello and welcome. Today we will take a look at our FMEA module. And after we have saw the FMEA module, we will directly jump into the control plan module. These are the topics for today. And before you ask, how do we start? We, of course, start as usual. Open the open module tab, typing in FMEA, hitting enter and jumping directly into the FMEA module. So what you can see here is the FMEA module itself. So it's the main module inside the PubTech software. And as you know, maybe from our webcast, each main module in BubTech will show you at the first sight the data that is existing in the SQL database. Uh, you can see here we have a workbook number, we have an FMA number, FMA name, and so on. But Daniel, workbook number, why don't we talk about FMA numbers here? Because we have more than just only FMEAs. So we have design FMEAs, we have process FMEAs, and we even have control plans. And the workbook is um, that data set that we use to organize all three elements. Okay, let's take a, a closer look here. So I open this existing data. And as Daniel mentioned, you can see here, this is the structure, the tree view we offer to you as a customer to organize your different documents. And the first thing, as we can see here, um, is the master data for the FMEA. And we have, uh, as usual, the FMEA number, name, a type, a confidential level, and so on. So different fields that are connected to the FMEA. Yes, additionally to that information, you can maintain your uh, risk assessment catalogs. So uh, you can choose if you want to go with RPN or additionally also with action priority number. Um, you can um, choose your catalogs, rating, severity, occurrence, and detection. And additionally to that, uh, you can um, set up warning thresholds that gives you a visual feedback uh, when your risk is going to be higher than a specific number, for example. So when you've mentioned the action priority, we have functionalities for the new standard? Absolutely, yes. According to harmonization, there is the action priority matrix, which is completely included into the PubTech software. Cool. Ah, that sounds nice. So let's go further on now and jump directly into the process view of the FMEA. Now the process view gives you a complete overview of all the different process steps that are connected to the process FMEA. Yeah, I have prepared something. Now, for example, we have some material delivery here and we have some production process steps like uh, heating metal or cooling or assembly and so on. The first step of the FMEA here. So if you think about the FMEA steps, the next step would be function analyzers. So you would add functions to those process steps. So we have uh, some functions already in our demo system, so you can just hide or show the functions directly in the tree structure. So I've done this already. You see here I have different functionalities like guarantee plastics characteristics or guarantee form underneath the process step. And the next step is that you have to think about the different failure modes. Now I will show you the failure modes now, switch them on, and I have prepared some data also here you can see different failure modes that are connected to the functions underneath the process steps. But I think that's a, that's a highlight here because all the, diff the failure modes are in one level here. Yes, correct. Um, but let's add an another failure mode to demonstrate how we connect those failures. Okay, okay. So now I will add a new, new entry here, right mouse button for the context menu. And you can see I have a context menu with the different functionalities. And to add something, I go to the Add Failure mode now. And here inside the Add Failure mode, you see a standard functionality we offer to you in the FMEA. And this functionality is named the Quick Entry Dialog. And the Quick Entry Dialog combines the functionality of working with the free text input and the catalog-based approach. Now, free text is necessary for the FMEA. You have to brainstorm information together with your team. But uh, as an IT guy, I need catalog data also. And here we combine this functionality into one dialog. So I jump right into the free text and start typing MIS. And now you can see that the system shows you all the failure modes that are currently 
um, existing in other FMEAs. So it's a kind of lessons learned approach here. And uh, now I want to add a missing working instruction as a new failure mode, mm -hmm. okay? Yeah. I take this and save. And now the missing working instruction is added inside the tree view as a new failure mode. Yeah, right. But while you were thinking about the wording of the failure, you didn't thought about the connection. So is this an, an, a root cause? Is this an effect or a failure mode? Um, this is something we can do right now. Mm -hmm. And for uh, connecting those failures and failure modes, we can use the failure net. So maybe yeah, you, can, you switch it on with an existing failure so we see how they are currently connected. We see that a setup error has two effects already in the system. And our new failure we just created um, could be the cause of setup error, right? Yeah, right. So missing working instruction should be connected to the setup error now. And to create this link, I just have to drag and drop this missing working instruction failure mode to the right side of the setup error. Now you can see here the link is now created and missing working instruction is the cause for setup error now. Quite easy, right? Yes, looks quite easy, absolutely. But our failure net can not only display uh, this uh, root cause failure mode effect construct, but if you zoom out, for example, you see that the failure net could be just more complicated as, as the um, structure we've seen before. So failure net allows you to map your um, product-related failure and failure interconnection within so your company. So you are able to, to build up the complete chain, yeah? Yes. From the, from the last effect to the first cause, right? Absolutely, right. right. Okay. Try this with Excel. It's <laughs> <laughs> quite hard, I think. Quite hard, I guess, yeah. <laughs> so now next step would be that we have this missing work instruction here. We have to name the current risk of this cause. Uh, and to do this, I go to the missing worker instruction, press the right mouse button and create a so-called new action pack. And inside this action pack, you are now able to maintain the occurrence and the detection of this missing worker instruction. Uh, let's assume that the, the occurrence is quite low. We have only a number of three, but the detection should be high with nine. When I save this information, you see that uh, using these two numbers, we have a calculated RPN and we have uh, an action priority with mid here. So after analyzes the, the current status of our risk, we now have to optimize our risk behavior. And therefore we plan a new action to reduce our detection rate. So now we'll create a new detection control here. And uh, here I can maintain the detection control itself. And let's assume that you want to establish a 100% inspection here inside this process step. And uh, we can assign this to an employee of your company. Um, here, for example, Katrin should do this. And Katrin has a due until date to the end of next week. Save this. Now I have created a new action inside the FMEA. Yes, you are currently in a kind of planning mode, so you think about which possible actions we can we can create to reduce several kinds of risks. But in the end, then you decide which of your planned actions you really want to realize. So then you would select that dedicated action and take this into process. Mm -hmm. That means that just at this time, Katrin receives a notification that she has to do a 100% inspection. So the notification is created using a workflow inside BubTech? Yes, there is a workflow behind the, the action management. And she receives an, an email with the information that she has to do something. So let's jump right into Outlook now. When I go to Outlook, you can see that Katrin has received an email here. And inside the email, Katrin receives the information what she has to do now. Yeah? You here you can see that the origin of the task is the action management itself. You see Katrin has a due date to the end of next week. And the topic is to, to establish the 100% inspection inside the email. So now Katrin has different ways to react to this email. She can first click on the Baptic Q link that brings her directly to the BubTQ software. So the software launches and she will log in into the BubTQ software and then directly jumps into the action management. 
but maybe she doesn't have a installed version of PubTechQ or there are no user licenses for her. That's why she can use the PubTechQ Go link that brings her to a browser-based approach to interact with the PubTechQ software, without using the software, of course. So she can log in with username and password um, using Chrome, Firefox, um, Edge browser, um, and then jump directly into her uh, action that was planned for her. Now Katrin has the option to work directly using the browser-based approach here. Let's assume that she wants to change the status of the task. So she can now change the status to in process. And this information will be saved to the database and will be directly shown in the FMEA itself, for example. So um, now we add some information. Let's upload a document, for example. Yes, she can upload the document directly from her local machine using the web browser, maybe adding some more additional text information for the action owner that he can verify the action in the end. And at the end, she can click on complete task and she's ready to go. So Katrin is ready now. Close the browser. And let's take a look inside the FMEA now. Okay. Now I'm back in the Bubtech software itself. I reopen the FMEA we saw before. Click on the process. Now I'm back in the process overview inside the FMEA. Um, now I'm using the search functionality. And here is the action. And the action, you can see that the task is completed now. It's, it's marked green. And inside the task, the information Katrin has added, like the document and the note, is stored also. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Now we can use her results to maybe rethink our rating of our detection. Our detection is currently at a number of nine, and based on our 100% inspection we just planned and uh, executed, our detection rate we can reduce to two. Yeah. And this information will be now used to create the FMEA sheet itself. So take a look here on the screen um, on the FMEA form sheet. You see here the complete history of this course. Yeah, we started with an RPN that was uh, rated as a yellow RPN and with uh, action priority of mid. And using the action pack itself, the 100% inspection, we would use this to low. But why is this in braces here? So that means that the action is currently planned but not executed yet. Mm -hmm. So that's why also the arrow is yellow in the, in the action um, icon, for example. Now I'm ready. So we run through all seven steps of FMEA almost and finish this topic more or less, I guess. Yes. So when I look into our agenda today, the next topic would be control plan, but we don't even have to switch any module, right? So we are standing right in the control plan now. Yeah, because the process structure itself can be reused now for the control plan. Yeah? Now I just have to switch off the FMAA function view here and switch on the characteristic view. And the same process structure will be used to show and to maintain the control plan. Uh, we have already um, input some data here, for example, uh, a characteristic length, width, surface, and so on. And this is possible for every process step. You can add some characteristics inside the control plan. So if I see the length here, for example, I can uh, in general, maintain data that is connected to length, like dimensions, tolerance limits, of course. Uh, I can uh, configure how you want to handle these characteristics in your control plan, or even later on in your inspection plan, maybe the gauge type or the inspection type, and so on. So this later on is quite important, because the information we have put in here in our control plan um, will be used inside the inspection planning. Now we have saw the FMEA itself. It's one of our main modules. Huh? Inside the FMEA, we have created the FMEA using all the quality tools. Like failure net, structure analysis, uh, quick entry dialog, and so on. Yeah. After this, we have uh, rearranged the FMEA using the process inside our control plan. We have, it, we have added some characteristics. Yes, correct. And these characteristics can now be used inside our inspection planning. 
Now we have three different types here for incoming good inspection, in-process inspection and outgoing good inspection. And the information you have put into your control plan, yeah? your um, tolerances, your specifications, uh, maybe some information from the drawing will be used inside the inspection planning. So the, the data that comes from the control plan will not be only copied to the inspection plan, but they're still connected. So if somebody will change something in a control plan, um, Babtech will automatically generate an action for the owner of the inspection plan that he has to update or to check if he wants to take over the update out of the control plan. So the system guarantees that both elements are synchronized and tells the user um, what to do then next. And to be honest, we have saw some additional modules. We have saw the action management and the task management. We have maintained the task using the browser-based approach, as a Bubdeck Q Go, so you don't have to install the software and you don't have to use the Bubdeck license to do this. So that's it. That was a story from the FMEA to the control plan right to the inspection planning using the supporting modules, action management and task management. I hope you have enjoyed the webcast. Stay healthy. Thank you and goodbye.